So the Chinese said, we're going to be the, the place that produces everything that the West wants. Um, and so they entered onto a strategy, different from the Soviets. Partly they designed it, partly they had the option to do it. And, and it's very, very important in terms of the struggles now. They made the decision to be different from the Soviet Union because as part of getting in to the rest of the world, getting their stuff sold in the United States, for example, they wanted to demonstrate a kind of we'll meet you halfway. So what they did was they said, we will allow private enterprise. We will have the state with a very dominant position, the state-owned and state-operated enterprises, which remain to this day important in China, but we will allow private enterprises by the Chinese, and even more, we will allow joint enterprises in which the private Chinese can cut a deal with German or Japanese or American companies, and we will allow that as well. The glee in the West that they were going to be brought into this was fantastic. Western companies began to understand that this was a successful strategy. I mean that. The Western companies saw that the growth in wages, the growth in a market, the growth in access to this exploding market was unbelievably attractive, and they had to get in on it. And so they rushed to the Chinese, and here's what was done. A deal was struck over and over again, same deal. We want to be able to bring f production to China. We want to take advantage of the very poor wages, the low wages you pay. That's fantastic for us. We can close the factory in Cincinnati and open it in Shanghai, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Number two, we want access to your market. Why? Because already by the 1990s and into this century, the Chinese market was growing faster than the American. If you know anything about capitalism, it's not the size of a market, but the rate of growth the that, is, that is crucial to, to, to planning for your future. So the American companies, for example, came in and they asked for two things a cheap labor force and access. And the Chinese said, fine, we'll give you the cheap labor and we'll give you the access. You've got to give us your technology hmm. and you've got to give us help in getting access to your market so we can sell this stuff, which is in your interest because you're producing in China stuff you want to sell in the United States too, so we'll do that together. That's when the marriage, because that's really what it is, between China and Walmart develops. The, the two of them need each other, have for 35 years. There would be no Walmart of the sort we take for granted without the Chinese and vice versa, because what Walmart did is give the Chinese an instant distribution network. Anything the Chinese could produce, Walmart would bring into every village and town, every suburban mall, everywhere. Fantastic right. deal. But that's why when you hear today, the Chinese are stealing our technology, that is nonsense. That's pure ideological bashing of China. A deal was struck. They got the technology, which they demanded, in exchange for the cheap labor and the access. And that was a deal that nobody held a gun to anybody's head. The American company that didn't want to share technology walks away. But it didn't want to because it was willing to parlay that technology and to claim now, oh, they forced us. Is